Hello and welcome to KimCast Art. We're going to do a little painting here called Blue Winter. I've already got my canvas here. It's 11 by 14. And I'm actually doing the audio separate from the video, so you, you may not be syncing here. Uh, the, the panels are already done in uh, liquid white. And we're getting ready to go ahead and paint the scene. And we've got uh, several errors in this painting, so it's going to give you some practice on how to fix problems that occur when you're painting. And I kind of did some of them intentionally just so I could wipe things off and show people that you can fix a painting. Right here we got some Lazarin Crimson. And I made that color actually with some Prussian Blue and, and Red. So just so you know, it's just a little bit of red. It's, it's more red than uh, Prussian Blue. Mix the two together. Put a little bit of white in there if you need to lighten it up a little bit. And we're just doing that for the uh, kind of like a the sunrise area of the sky. We'll put a bit of white in there too. And right here we're going to goof it up immediately because I went over the uh, white too much. And we'll just probably end up adding some more white to it here. And I want it a little bit darker there. So, But that's not really a mess up there. It's just a matter of adjusting the color. So hopefully... Um, this will work out good, hopefully. And as you see, I'm brushing back over it some. I'm kind of removing a little bit of the paint. Because I just had a little bit more paint there than I really needed. Uh, trying to add some more white in there. Not quite as much as I'd like it to be. And, but uh, it's going to work. Now we're going to use some Prussian Blue. And we basically put a little bit of white in there, not too much, but uh, very little. But we're actually going to darken it up with a little bit of black here shortly. But I'm just putting the blue in now. Darker on the top, darker on the sides, and we're just going to fill in the sky with that color. I am using a smaller brush for this right there. You can see it's a flat brush, probably about a three quarter inch flat. And I'm kind of doing that intentionally so you can see that I you can do Bob Ross style painting with a smaller brush. Because I am using a smaller canvas, I decided to go ahead and try the smaller brush. I will be switching to one of the uh, Bob Ross one inch brushes shortly so we're coming all the way down we went about a third of the way down so probably a little bit lower than I wanted it to be originally as far as the the crimson I should have brought it up a little bit higher but as you'll see I'm going to adjust that a little bit here shortly we'll add some more crimson to it and then we want to blend it out So if we're probably at the point now where we're adding some black to the brush, Prussian blue. Just because I want to darken the top a little bit more. Nope, we're putting some crimson in. Surprise! Okay, we're going we're gonna to blend that crimson into the blue. And we add a little more crimson. Of which we'll have to add some more white again. <clears throat> if you're new to the channel, I appreciate it if you subscribe and like the video and leave comments. I really, really appreciate the comments. It really means a lot to me. This is meant to be a total beginner painting, which is why I'm not really stressing too much on it, making things super fantastic I'm mainly wanting people to learn how to put the paint on how to use the brushes get some fam familiarity get familiar with the with the colors and to see that you can use smaller canvas Bob Ross typically used 
18 by 24 canvas most of the time. Personally, I, I use 16 by 20 more than anything, but I've been using a lot of 11 by 14s for these videos because they're a little bit quicker and use less paint, of course. And once you've had enough practice, which I've done hundreds of these paintings, you can pretty much use whatever size you want. I'm using right there a little a little brush from the hardware store I bought. I'm just showing you that you can use one. I'm using it just to blend with. Very soft brush. Something you might use to stain. Might, maybe you could stain with it or paint with it or whatever. You can get them pretty inexpensively, even at the dollar store, I believe. Uh, dollar Tree, Dollar General, wherever. I probably got those at Ace Hardware, I'm not sure, but I think I probably did. I'm actually using a new camera. This is actually done in 1080p. I actually did record it with audio, but for some, for some unknown reason, the audio didn't record. I have no idea why. I probably didn't turn it on. <laughs> That's my best bet. My best, my best guess, rather. Now we mixed some black, some of the crimson we had left over, some Prussian blue. Mostly Prussian blue, as you can see. We're doing the mountains with that mountain color. We'll call it a darker mountain color. We're actually going to do several different mountains. Three or four of them. Push that paint right into the canvas. Now I'll tell you, before I did the painting, just so you all know, I actually take the canvas because you can see the bounce on it still, but it's it's actually pretty firm. But when I first opened that canvas up, it was really kind of floppy. And you see a video on my how-to videos on how to tighten them up. And just basically you're just spraying water on the back of this back side of it and wiping it all over with your hand really firmly all over and tapping the canvas on the back side on the front side. And you'll feel it tighten up just like a drum. And you want it to be tight when you paint, especially when you're using a knife. Or a brush for that matter, but you'll get way better results if that canvas isn't fluctuating too much pushing inside when you're pushing on the on the canvas <coughs> okay now we're just pulling out the sides we had I didn't have a lot of paint on there so I didn't scrape very much off really I didn't scrape it off didn't have to because I purposely wanted to leave a little bit of extra there to pull down but it's probably not a bad idea to go ahead and scrape some of that excess off I don't know how much you've got there, but scrape it off. Then just pull it down. Keep in mind where you want the mountains to be coming down to. What point you want to come down to. And as you can see, you follow the lay of the land. Basically, the follow the lay of the mountain land with your brush. And most likely when you see me not doing nothing, I'm washing the brush. I probably could do things quicker, but, you know, I'm just so used to washing them that, uh, you know, I just take the time to do it. I could, I actually do have enough brushes. I could probably not have to wash brushes most of the time. But I'd have a lot of dirty brushes to clean in the end. I'd just as soon not keep cleaning a whole bunch of them at the end of the painting. But if it was a big painting and it going to be a long one, I actually have done that before. I've actually had five or six of the same size brushes sitting there using them. Um, and I still end up washing them one or two. So now we're using the, the darker mixture on the shadow side of the mountains which is mostly Prussian blue and black. And 
And let that paint break away. You don't, you don't you don't want it to be all solid one color. You want it to show some of the lighter colors too. We're just getting on the left side of the mountains a little bit. That's all we're doing. And normally I would just use a lighter color on the right side, which we are going to do. But I'm actually going to add some burnt sienna into the mix. And you'll see that shortly. Because I wanted to add a little bit of brown to those mountains. Just for something different. Now the white will actually have some blue added to it, Prussian blue. But um, I didn't do it, but later on, after looking at the painting, I was thinking, you know what, I probably should have added a little bit more white in a little, certain little area, just a little bit here and there. Just plain white, like about on the tips of the mountains and stuff, and a few other spots on the right sides of the mountains. It, you'll find that if you do that, it'll probably brighten the mountains up really nice and pretty. I didn't take the time to do it, but that's just a recommendation for you. <coughs> So there I am now, I'm adding some of the burnt sienna now. I, you can add a little bit of white to that if you like to, if you want a little bit lighter. I think I added just mostly burnt sienna. There might be a touch of blue in there, just because it happened to be on the palette beside it. But most likely it's just brown, brown will be fine. I do have a little bit of glare on the top of the painting, I notice, from the light. I do have a spotlight on the left side, and it seems to be hitting it pretty well. But the blue is actually there, it's just the light. Now we're coming down with the light, the light blue. You know, I mixed in with some white. Let that paint break away from the knife. No man probably would have come down a lot more with that um, that white right there, but I didn't because we're gonna have a a lot of pine trees in there. And there's actually going to be some fog in between that, too, as you'll see shortly how to do that. And I'm not even sure why I even put that mountain in there. We end up actually covering it later. Well, some of it with the tree. And this is just a basis on how to do this painting. You actually, when you've done this, there's actually... I thought about putting about another five or six more bigger birch trees in there from the lower area, which you'll, I put a couple more trees down lower, but um, if you want to hit the time, it probably would enhance it a lot more to put them birch trees in there. Without the leaves, of course, just, just the trees with the branches. Now we're just tapping and we're pushing, we're, we're pushing pretty firmly. And we're just catching some of that paint on the bottom. And that's how we're making that foggy look. That nice misty fog. And just keep pushing. Just pull up a little bit. Very, very lightly. Make sure you're going with the same direction of the mountains. <coughs> then bend across. Smooth it right out. And you're done.
Alright, from this point on, I think you'll be able to see how I do the trees and everything. And I'm going to actually get off the audio, and I'm probably going to stop it about in this area. And we're going to kind of do the rest of it as kind of a speed up painting. Thank you all for watching. Make sure you subscribe. Like the comments. Leave, uh, like like the paintings, bro. Like the videos. And don't forget, we do have memberships you can join. Different levels of membership. We have lives. I try to do them at least once a week. Maybe more if possible in the future here. So stay tuned for those. If you subscribe and click that little bell, click all, you'll get the notices for the lives. And hopefully we'll see you there. Um, it's a great time to ask questions. Y'all have a good day, and we'll see you the next time. Bye-bye.